Hello, everybody, and welcome to part two of the mail call for December of 2018 in January. And a big month, what I call a real month of transition here on the channel. And thanks to Reno and Las Vegas and all the different places we went on the holiday season and visited and all the street streams. It uh, really opened up new ground here on the channel and historic ground on the bottom of YouTube, especially in terms of doing live streams uh, from the street. And it uh, has really, I think, given a real boost to the channel and certainly for me made it a lot less time consuming in terms of editing work putting in and more interesting and more interactive for content. So I hope that you agree. Let's get on to part two of the mail call. I really didn't like your channel until someone directed me that you found Cooper's relative's grave in Las Vegas. It was nice. Well, you know, I guess I'm going to go out on permanent grave hunts for people then if that's what it gets to take people uh, turning positive on my channel but seriously uh as i said before it kind of got built up into more um than maybe it should have been just a question just a matter of being at the right place at the right time and i've got to believe anybody on youtube that was in a position where they suddenly get alerted by somebody that you're in a place where you can do something for someone not necessarily finding a grave but maybe it's going and uh, finding somebody in that's alive in real life or, or uh, you know, picking something up for somebody or doing something. You never know. Just doing something to help out. And I think anyone would have done the same. But it made for a very, uh, very special uh, live stream event for sure, which, uh, which is really great. So thank you. Are you on drugs? <laughs> I get this all the time. Uh, most grannies your age are knitting grandkids' booties and stuff. You must be on crack. No, I'm not on any. I'm just blessed with decent health and a lot of drive and uh, ambition to have fun in life and to make every day count and to make every day uh, is interesting and fulfilling as possible. And in most cases, that involves people. And maybe that's the thing that I enjoy most is the people aspect of uh, doing YouTube. So if that gets me high, then yeah, I'm high. But I'm not on any kind of drugs, honestly, okay? <laughs> See, why didn't you tell your pal Kelly her schmeckle was being streamed live on YouTube? Well, the day after I got back, um, from Las Vegas, uh, my friend uh, Kelly had done an overnight uh, hangout, and uh, it wasn't the night I got home, but uh, she didn't meet us for Hamburger Mary's, the drag show that uh, we went to, because uh, earlier that day, uh, after the Piranha Club that uh, Friday night, we went to the Piranha Club, she started a hangout, I guess she drank a lot, and I guess she thought her camera was turned off when she got up and just took her pants off and and uh, just started undressing right on the uh, <laughs> right on the live stream. And uh, yeah, for schmeckle for everybody to uh, see there, I did attempt as soon as you know I saw it real time, and I immediately called Kelly on the phone, but she was kind of a little discombobulated, and I said, "You've got to delete that video now." And eventually she got to it, but unfortunately um, the strike came down before that. So I did try on that. And Kelly, it was nice to hang out with you again in Las Vegas. Um, this person said, "Did you ever feel something?" This person went on to a, a went on to a long thing about how they enjoy videos about abandoned places and creeping around old buildings and and things, which I enjoy doing too. Within the Within the bounds of safety, sometimes you go into a place and you don't really know what to expect when you round that corner. So 
And this person said, did you ever figure out what the story was on that abandoned water park in Las Vegas? And I guess they're talking about Waterworld down there. And it's really in California. And it's really not even in Las Vegas. I think it's perhaps uh, 70, 80 miles away from south of Las Vegas. And the story I get for local people that uh, went there in Vegas Vixen's husband Randy was born and raised in Las Vegas and he remembered in the 1970s uh, and 80s going to that water park and then I guess for whatever reason uh, you know maybe they got over leveraged loans just uh, a, a lack of interest developed and I just can't say Exactly. I didn't get the full story on it, but I am interested in uh, learning more. So the park was called Water World, and it was a, it's a huge park. It's probably the largest abandoned uh, theme park in America. And it looked to have everything from big water slides down 150-foot uh, hills to uh, a river that snakes through that must have had... Uh, high-speed jets pushing you along on inner tubes. So it looked like an interesting kind of uh, place and maybe not a bad place to spend a day in the heat of the uh, of the Vegas uh, spring, summer, and fall. But I don't know exactly what happened uh, to it. So are you nervous about your surgery? We always have to be very respectful of uh, surgeries, but the surgeon that's doing mine is extremely gifted and he's also has a very uh, strong safety protocol for during the uh, surgery and things and he does what's called wide awake surgery he does not do any procedures under general anesthesia everything is under a local so you are awake yeah sometimes you feel a little something that you wish you didn't feel when the surgery is going on particularly when they're doing a little suctioning of fat sometimes you hit a bone but it's a very it's a pretty safe procedures all in all and you know you get a pretty good health assessment before you go in and if you're healthy you really don't have any problems uh, i find that most cosmetic things as opposed to non-elective uh, surgery required for health tend to be a lot safer and they tend, tend to be more routine in nature but my surgeon takes nothing for granted and he's very cautious and I like the way his whole staff and his whole operation is run okay um let's see uh why would you have more surgery your body's fantastic now question mark it's not a question that partially has to do with the knowledge when I went in for my bikini tuck and for my initial Brazilian butt lift, my surgeon made it quite clear that really two times uh, injecting fat is what it really takes to get the results that most women want. In other words, the first time you get you get a good base of fat, you get a pretty good result. But as he told me at that time, if you can book in a second time, and give you a good discount for it. If you can book in a second time and come back a year, a year and a half later, it's always more aesthetically pleasing when we put uh, the fat on fat. It has a much higher survival rate and it has a much better result. So I was sold, you know, it's kind of paid for. And then to inject some, you know, into the apple of the cheek to give a little more fullness too. So sure. Paid for, I'll get it done. So, um, this last question here: Will you be doing more live events? They are cool with our ability to talk with you live. Yes, this has been my most satisfying thing on YouTube, particularly for the end of 2009, the end of 2018, where I really decided I needed to make a change of direction. I'd gone through tons of cameras starting with a general electric a1250 camera back in 2000 uh, and back in 2013 when i first started the channel january graduated to a panasonic sdr hdr7 i don't know what it was and then on to uh canon cameras and polaroid cubes and then discovering gopro cameras and going through gopro and then eventually 
Moving on to uh, a big Olympus OMD EM5 Mark II mirrorless uh, camera with all the equipment and then coming back to a GoPro and then discovering everything that a uh, camera is able to do. And I finally decided between the GoPro and this uh, Samsung Galaxy S9 Plus that, that I had two pieces of amazing technology. If I wanted to make set piece videos, I could just grab my uh, GoPro Hero 7 Black Edition, make nice stabilized videos. Uh, if I wanted to do that and do the editing, I could edit in camera with my PowerDirector CyberLink software, which has worked fantastically. Uh, if I wanted to uh, do more live stream or more more uh, videos where I needed better light, believe it or not, this is a better low light camera than the GoPro Hero 7. Uh, it, could, it was easy to just take this into a restaurant and to do uh, videos or take it on the street and and for doing live streams and then I discovered that people really enjoyed that genre of, of uh, interaction and really enjoyed those type of streams not that I do it exclusively but think of the time that I used to take editing videos when I would get back from Las Vegas in prior prior years and I would have to work a, a week to edit videos and by that time a lot of people didn't care you know you were already out of Las Vegas they didn't really care too much about things at that point but I did notice when you do things live in real time people care a lot and people watch it and when it happens real time and they have a chance to interact they know two things the first thing they know is they know they don't have any idea like you what might happen on that live stream and number two it takes them places that they've not been before as opposed to tourist destinations and gets them immersed in what I call street life, which is a very interesting thing. It's not everybody's cup of tea, but to me it's a wildly interesting uh, thing, and people have really gravitated to that. So it's a double header here of uh, some set content with editing videos and then the really nice street live streams. I want to thank you guys for being here for part two of the mail call. Some of the best questions I've gotten in years on here. We're well into our way in January of 2019. And uh, yeah, very excited about that. And uh, I want to thank you for being along. All right, see you for the third and final part tomorrow. Thanks, everybody.